Yes, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Rugby Muscle Podcast. I'm your host, as always, TJ, and today's episode, we are talking about all different types of testing that we can see and have seen and is done regularly in rugby clubs, uh, what you guys want to do, because we've seen a lot of people talk about different tests and what they should be using, what they shouldn't be using, what are good times, like you've had Bowden Barrett come out with an amazing Bronco time, what are the validity of these tests, why are we doing them, why they might not be so great. And in this edition, I'm joined by my man Alex, who has recently changed his Instagram handle to Athlete Testing. So I thought, he's a big believer in this testing. I'm a little bit skeptical at best when it comes to testing. I thought it'd be a good idea to have him come on the podcast and sort of be the testing guy versus me, the non-testing guy. And we can have a real deep discussion about different tests that you can use, why they are valid, why you should use them, why you shouldn't use them, etc. This is a really long podcast, but there's so much valuable info that let's get straight into it. This is, I don't know what episode this is, but it's with Alex and we are talking all about testing. Did I mention why you were coming on this, but why why I was like, this will be a good podcast to do with you? Nope. Okay, good. So the reason that you're on this podcast today is because I wanted to go over um, your Instagram has changed recently. You've moved it over to athlete testing. I say recently, re- yeah. yeah, I was yeah. going to say I say recently. When did you change it? A few good few months back, at least. Uh, I don't remember. But the point here with this is, a- athlete testing is one thing. But I've been, you know, as teams are going back into rugby preseason, mm-hmm. you are going to get a lot of. Uh, different rugby tests, so namely the Bronco and the beep oh, test, yeah. Yeah. the uh, yo-yo test, um, and then there's one other shuttle that the RFU uh, love to there's try. A special, and... There's a special RFU one as well. That's yeah, like that's the one I was going to talk about. Um, and so guys will be going back into preseason and they'll be doing these sorts of tests or maybe the coaches will be figuring out like what sort of tests do we want to do. And mm-hmm. you're big into your testing, uh, like you like doing like specific measurements of progress like that. I'm if I'm about as far on the opposite end as like reasonably possible. I wouldn't say that there's no place for testing, but um, I would say that like I don't. I'm not a big fan of testing in general. I think that you can. It's just in general, like if you're making good progress, the game of rugby itself is the test. And if you are making pr- progress in the markers that you're trying to train to get better, then that's progress. So you know that those markers that you're trying to get better will then allow you to be a better player, right? Yep. And so I've got you on as someone that is into their tests, into their measurements, like more so the other side now. You're probably, what's going to happen is we end up agreeing. And that's, that's how like a lot of the debates go. But I wanted someone that was more on the other side of the spectrum to sort of count yeah, my cool. point. Yeah. So I thought you would be that sort of person. Sure. So do you want to give a bit of an overview as to why you change? I think that's what would be a good introduction is why you change to athlete testing in general and why that's like, because obviously that means that's more of your brand, more of your approach and how you view training in the realm of like trying to get improvement is via testing, via measurement. So yeah. Cool. Like, that's fine. Do we now? We already, yeah, we yeah, recorded. yeah. Yep. When the does that start? That's mate. Okay. I just do it. Like there's, there's been a good few podcasts now where I've just just hit record before we before I've even said hello, and then okay. <clears throat> sweet because oh, yeah, so, they know um, you're on the podcast, right? They yeah. know it's you uh, because they've clicked on the description where it says uh, with athlete testing and what this podcast is going to be about. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. it's not like it's okay, a brand cool. new tv show where they don't know what's going on like they know exactly what they're in for with this podcast so, uh, anyway. mate, talking about talking about tv shows and not know what's going on i've been watching a lot of korean tv recently <laughs> um and i have no idea what's going on but it's amazing like korean cooking shows are the best they're they're, they're so good okay send me a link and i'm gonna put uh, a link to some sort of korean clip in the show notes yeah i will i will all right sweet Okay, so I switched from collision and combat to athlete testing because it really was where 
I was heading and based as a as a coach. Um, I wasn't doing that much with either collision athletes like uh, like rugby players or combat athletes like the um, mixed martial art guys or BJJ guys that I was mm. working with. Um, the more and more I did uh, like general population work or specific like power athlete work, strength athlete work, the more the the training relied on having some base numbers and predicting where to go and what to get the best results needed to have that background testing. Um, I'm semi-obsessed with individualization of training processes. Mm -hmm. By which I mean, if we got like a group of people, so a lot of what I do is working in a group setting. Um, Just because you're in a group doesn't mean you shouldn't have individual training, like you're still a different person. And to be able to prescribe that on, on like a large level, you need to have a, a layer of testing in place to be able to differentiate people. Um, so really that led to like just a change in branding for me. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. So it's essentially, yeah, because we have, you know, a model of a lot of, uh, you know, semi-private sort of, especially, you know, you moving into the sort of the CrossFit, uh, CrossFit London and, doing the classes there and helping them out and doing all that sort of stuff. It is very much group based, but just because it Mm -hmm. is like, just because the overall programming say, you know, we're in a six month phase where we're really trying to work on everyone's uh, clean and snatching of an Olympic lifts. Right. That Mm -hmm. still doesn't mean that everyone should be doing the same thing. And then even within that week, you know, we're all trying to improve this specific thing. But if we've got, if one person's got a weakness in their squat out of the hole, and another person's got a weakness in their extension from the pool or whatever it is, you know, mm-hmm. there's so many different realms that you can go around whilst even following specific principles, there's still a lot of adaptation that can be done there. And that's why, like when I get questions such as like, what do you think is better trap bar or flap? Uh, uh, this is just to pick on Anthony because yeah. he keeps asking the question, but uh, what's better trap bar deadlifts or shape bar deadlifts. And I'm like, that is, you know, I could give you a million different answers and all of those answers could be wrong. <laughs> it's hex bar. The answer's yeah. hex bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so like, like you said, like in that group setting, like all my guys have individual programs now. I run right. about 62 individual programs for a group setting. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and then it's the testing that allows you to, to do that, right? Yeah, absolutely, because I actually don't make very many decisions in how I program now. Okay. Um, so you're going to so be replaced very soon? I have an app being made at the moment. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. yeah, so soon, soon I'll... Because uh, that's what I want, like, the coach is a coach, right? The coach isn't there to, to be kind of answering, or oh, what questions, what should I do? Or the coach isn't there to, to be... Um, thinking about stuff. I want to be spending my time fixing people and making sure people are getting better mm-hmm. rather than on the spot programming and like modifying things with pe- special people because they can't do whatever exercise it is. Yeah. Uh, and we don't the, advance. Like, there's we, a, we shouldn't have anyone in the class who's doing an air squat, right? If they're able to do a back squat. Yeah. Oh, depends if, yeah. Yeah, I, that was I know, a really I bad example. As a, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. The, depends on not using a shit example, but yeah, I, 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 I understand yeah. what you're saying. I think that, um, like the, the problem with that or the, the, the reason that we, we do that testing that you're doing that testing is to, for, to find specific things that you want to improve upon. Would that be correct? Uh, yeah. So I'm basically looking at weak points. Yeah. And you I find like a, a whole, weak, a whole list. Yeah. List and stuff. there's a, there's a, there's a point there and let me note this down because I want to come back to that point is about like coaching even if it is an AI system it's still your it's still your system so um but the point I, I wanted to make first though with that is that testing is the purpose of right you're doing this and then we're reacting to whatever the outputs are okay now mm-hmm. when it comes to I'd say the vast majority of clubs in their preseason, they'll do a beep test or a yo-yo test or some sort of test within their first week or so of training. And then they might do one at yeah. the end, right? Yeah. What does that then 
what's the purpose of that? I, I, I assume to encourage injury and give people a false sense of security. <laughs> Um, that's, that's what I assume that's for. No, you're um, supposed to. You're supposed to be the testing no, guy. You're supposed to be telling me that that's a great idea, and they, you know, it's because. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just drop a bomb on you now, mate. And it, it needs to be applicable testing. That's where the goal is, right? It's testing which is appropriate for the sport, yeah, or testing which is appropriate for the task, rather than just a test that everyone does because that's what they've been told to do when they did a uh, sports science degree or whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah, so there's even more. I, I get it. I get why people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I get what they're trying to do, and they're saying, okay, if it's an intermittent sprint sport, we want to test your intermittent sprint ability. But it's not really that back and forth sprint ability, right? That's not what you're testing. Like, what, before, what's the key? Before, what are the key before points? We, to before we get into those specifics of like the the rel, the, you know, the relative, like uh, how it measures like rugby. Right. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the purpose itself. So, why would someone, or why would a, t- why does a team measure you at the start of preseason and then measure you at the end of preseason? Oh, just to see if you made any gains, I guess. That's what right. I would take it for. I take it to say, are we improving? Here's what we're doing working. And do we, uh, as a coach, do you think that you need that test to to find that out? That's specific or two test. Hmm? Then do we need to test to see if we're improving? Yes. Or do we need... To... Yeah, I do think we do need that. But when I say test, when you say test, we're probably talking about different things. Or we, or we expect the same thing. So for me, like a test for rugby might be how do we perform in a small part of the game? Yeah. Yeah, but you can't get... You can't get and where that would rely on a coach's eye uh, and, you know, it's still fairly subjective... Yeah, absolutely. Um, which is the problem. Whereas, obviously, doing a specific run test with a time, you've got a specific easy, output yeah. of saying, oh, look, you improved. And don't get me wrong, there are tests that, or there are measurements that I like to do that might not even be tests, but there are good measurements that I like to do to see if my guys are improving aerobically, etc. I mean, a measurements, anything you measure is a test one. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's as soon as you put a measurement on it. That's a test. If I if I had the soundboards these days, I would be drop. I'd be hitting that bomb sound effect because exactly that. I I think that's what really my biggest point. Uh, not against testing, but against like specific testing is that like if you are like recording data, that itself is almost testing, right? Yeah, absolutely. And if yeah, your data is trending in the direction that you want to be, so like. And this is my thing against bros, right? Uh, this isn't this isn't to do with rugby in general, but this is most people that go to the gym, right? They will be doing a strength training phase, or a, or maybe even just a a muscle gaining phase, and they'll mm-hmm. be doing anything from five to ten reps, maybe at a certain percentage, maybe at a certain RPE, maybe just in a linear, they're going to add two point five pounds or kilos to the bar every single week. And they're going to keep doing that for six weeks, okay? Then out of nowhere, they're like, okay, I'm going to do my one rep max to see that I'm improving to see where I'm at. Yeah, and bullshit. I fucking hate it because I'm just like, you know you know where you're at because you know that you've added X amount of kilos to your rep maxes or your, your training load already. So you should know that you're improving. Yeah, you know you're stronger. Yeah, it's... it's- as long as you're not making these really like really sudden changes in your training, it shouldn't matter. Like you, you know where you're at. What you're and, and and the biggest problem with that is that like, so yeah, if you follow a reasonable training program and you're following proper training principles where you're doing progressive overload, you're doing and you know that because you are tracking your training and it's specific, right? You're not doing shitty crossfit not your crossfit shitty crossfit right you're not doing random shit every single mm-hmm. time and, and metcons you're actually doing specific work to get specific outputs you should know that you're improving sometimes you don't know that you're improving because your training is random by nature and you don't know that you're improving because you're not eliciting week by week extra strain on the body so yes you could improve but you know, if I throw 10 pieces of shit against the wall, all 10 might stick, but I don't fucking know, you know? Mm-hmm. 
Whereas, whereas if you're training smartly, you're training uh, in a predictable way for a predictable outcome. You should know that if you're training random by nature, then yeah, maybe you do need to test, but then like you, you could also train a lot better and that would be a much better idea way of doing things. Right. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Any other points or, or things you want to piggyback off of or, or disagree with? Or things that I messed out with that on point? That one, yeah, I mean, the real point is how do you decide what works, I guess, on that one. Like, define KPIs and define how, how if you actually are improving. But as long as you're smart about it, like, no one, no one we're talking to is so far down that training rabbit hole that they can't improve by doing something smart. Yeah. And I think... I think the point is, so KPIs, right? Key point indicators. you want to sort of expand upon that point? Yeah, so... What they are, are, why you would use indicators. Yeah. Key forms indicators are whatever we choose to measure our performance in. So, for example, if you're a powerlifter, your key forms indicators are your squat bench and deadlift one at maxes. If you're a rugby player, then it might be like your ability to accelerate in a four meter square, for example. Mm-hmm. But you're, you're way into more inside than I am, but... Or, I don't know, what do you use, TJ? You probably use an aerobic test as well as a like an acceleration drill or something like that, I'd imagine. Yeah. It, if it, it is, uh, and again, I, so where we, would dis, where we would differ here is I would use different aspects of the training as the KPI, right? So if and, – and it yeah. comes in any phase, right? So, it, again, if you're in hypertrophy, if you're, if you're training for the pure purpose of hypertrophy, which is – in of itself a bit of a strange goal because it's different because it's not something that you specifically train for. It's just a sort of a side add up to mm-hmm. getting stronger, right? In the right rep ranges. Um, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So then yeah, your KPI, yeah, your KPI would be your training load in the eight to 15 rep range, or maybe even the 15 to 30 rep range. But if your if your load is increasing and that your overall training volume is increasing, well, not only is that like a a consequence of the training, but it's also an indicator that your training is going in the right direction. Um, like yes, we would do sprint times. Sometimes it has to be depend on what tools we have available to us. Um, it could be subjective measures, but yeah, most of the t- you know there's specific ones for every specific uh, movement we do, like jumping distance, yeah. jumping height, those yeah. sorts of things. And and so not, not only are those stuff, but yes, yeah. yeah. And so anything um, that you want to improve to or anything that should trend in a positive direction to this is the response for it. And then you could that then what a good part of that is that then you, if you, if you're looking at key performance indicators, not just anything. Okay. So if you're like, say if you're trying to improve your jump height, um, Yes, as part of your training regime, you might randomly just to, you know, just for prehab purposes and whatnot, have like the bench press in there and your bench press goes up. The bench press probably isn't a KPI for your jump, right? But no. it's still, so therefore the other, the good thing from the, the good thing about KPIs on the other standpoint is that they allow you to only focus on the few things that you do need to improve and not uh, think, oh, this is getting better. This must mean that this is getting better, you know? Yeah, so, like for example, well, sorry, let me just finish this point yeah, off. Yeah, just just for example here, um, if you are um, improving at if you if you again jump height could be a really good one, right? Because mm-hmm. we could think that uh, we could train Olympic lifts to get better at jumps, and you could say, well, Olympic lifts then should be your KPI. But if this person is terrible Olymp- at Olympic lifts, and they then introduce a training program where they do power snatches three times a week right they might mm-hmm. not improve their jumps at all but they might improve their um, their lifts by you know literally like 50 percent purely because their their lifting technique got better yeah it was more um, skillful but there and therefore the olympic lift might be a poor kpi for a certain individual um and therefore yeah, it would I, actually I, I, be wrong so right. then you have to do that. yeah so it's really important that you, you don't just think, oh, everything can improve, everything can be a KPI. There's the point of the KPIs is what are the few what are the things that we know that if they improve, we are going to be uh, head closer and closer towards our training goal. Yeah, that's um, you're kind of hitting on the head there. 
where you, we, you've got to start looking at firstly your KPIs and your secondary KPIs and your tertiary KPIs. So to make, make it more simple, I guess we look at what how, what fulfills that correlation coefficient mm-hmm. between these these three things. If something's got a high like like correlation between, if we look at jumping now, so for me personally, when my conventional deadlift goes up, I look at like a 0.7 to 0.8 correlation with my vertical jump. Mm-hmm. Okay, it just happens that I I've been testing that recently, um, so I know that that's just quickly 0.7 to 0.8. Um, one being one's perfect. Yeah, so er- so one's so a perfect ev- ratio. So for everything, every little thing that you improve on your jump is exact. It's matched exactly by how much more you deadlift. Yeah, and then zero. All the speed be- of my deadlift case. Yeah, and then zero would be nothing. It would be no relevance. Yeah, yeah. Carry on. Um, so I mean, like this, the fact that um, this is actually relevant to the conversation now is, it's the speed of a deadlift improving which is matched rather than the load of a deadlift yeah. okay so it's it's not as simple as i mean strong or something it's there's specific um speeds of lifts or ways you're doing this or or ways you're doing whatever drill it is which will have a carryover not just hey i'm going to get strong that means i'm going to get better rugby mm-hmm. that makes sense yeah, yeah absolutely so what where we've gone here is really like we've gone all the way and i like this because we can we can then step further back up we've gone really deep into the specifics of what is the purpose of a test in the first place right and it is to find to to make sure really that we're improving i think even when you're in schools right they why do you do tests at schools it's to make sure that you are uh, improving like the teachers are doing their job and you're actually getting a, a smart kid yeah exactly and i kind of say it's on to like key performance indicators and key performance inhibitors. Yeah. Um, so I, I use like a KPI plus KPI minus, right? So mm-hmm. what, are the, what are the main things that make us better and what are the main things that are holding us back? Okay, because there's two different things, right? Yeah. And it might be that the time we spend uh, trying to improve a, a, a really high standard uh, key performance like indicator might be better spent or give us a bigger return on fixing things that are holding us back mm-hmm. yeah so, so look at um something like your ability to scrummage right uh, if you're if you're scrummaging and you're you're playing proper your shoulders it hurts when you get into that position right to scrummage then uh-huh. that's going to hold you back and it might be better off fixing your shoulder to give you like a pain-free scrummage rather than like getting stronger legs right does that make sense so we have this like Fix inhibitors plus improve indicators. Yeah, so one hundred percent. So it's almost like what are the things again? So what are the things that we can omit? And that's like, I think both you and I like. It's not like if you're working with professional athletes, it'd be one thing, and even then, it's not. But because we've only got a limited amount of time and a limited limited amount of recovery resources, so a lot of people would pose the point like, well, why not just improve upon everything? Well, that's just impossible, right? So then it then we dial it back and we're like, right, what are we going to actually improve upon? Like, and this is this is again, this is sort of the problem with doing these different tests in preseason, right? If there's that that everyone knows that one guy that has especially and you you're gonna see it and and hopefully you guys listen to this podcast, right? The you're gonna you're gonna be some of the few people that go to training and you're already in good shape because you've not uh because you've during lockdown you've you've been training quite hard you figured out what you can do you haven't made excuses you haven't said oh the gym's closed there's no rugby i guess i could just sit on my whereas uh you'll see a bunch of your teammates that you'll go back and and, and they almost forgot rugby existed you know <laughs> they forgot that they their lungs could actually uh actually really get through some work they've forgotten about all of that and what they might have discovered is baking you know those are the that guys that will be at the though. Those are the guys that will be at the back of the the the, the group when you're, or they won't even be in the group. But when you're doing your tests, whereas the people that have already been training real hard, they'll be at the front week one, right? The funny mm-hmm. thing is, a lot of the guys that improve quite well, even more so, are the guys that are already at the front. They're like, all right, cool, I got, um, 
and this is not the test that, that you see most people doing, but they're like, cool, I got 22 minutes on my 5K. Now let's see if I can get under 20 by the end of preseason. Or I got 21 minutes to see if I can get under 20, right? The key thing I sort of want to hammer home is what you're talking about with this is, well, that's great, right? But maybe the focus on that person that ran 20 or 21 minutes isn't upon them improving. They're like, they should be, if you hit a good time at the beginning of preseason, that should then indicate, right, okay, cool. My aerobic fitness is probably where it needs to be. What else do I need to improve upon? Do I need to be doing more alactic work? Do I need to be doing more power work? Do I need to maybe even get stronger because I'm fit enough? But my, the biggest thing that's going to hold me back when we get back into the season is that if I get smashed at a breakdown and then I'm out of the rest of the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is where, yeah, this is where you need to take a step back and actually, or we need to take a step back in this conversation and look at what are our like sports indicators, right? Uh, before that, fall into before that, I still, I still like. think we can discuss the purpose of that test because we're at week one, right? And if we're doing a test mm-hmm. at week one and we're also doing a test at the end of preseason, well, to me, it like that already sets up the fact that the the purpose of the test is to see that the guys are improving throughout preseason. But if you do a test at the beginning and you find out that you, that's something that you don't need to work at especially as a player, maybe it can be worth saying to the coach, hey, look, um, I've clearly got a decent enough time. Do you think I really need to improve upon this time? Or do you think it's better that I use my, you know, I take from this test, I actually take something out of it and say, right, I'm, I'm where I need to be. I should spend my time focusing on other areas. Because I don't th- hear anyone doing that, you know? You, you just no, have it. You're absolutely right about that. And the nature of a test is, and the, the problem is the nature of testing is, well, I need to improve upon this. It's human nature, right? We, especially the guys that are already doing quite well, it's going to be in your head to be like, right, cool. That's my time. I need to get better. But, you know, you're saying that's a, uh, that's a bad example. I'm trying to think of some like, you know, uh, that's a good example. If, if you say oh, MMA, uh, like, so who's the strongest guy in MMA? Like right. strongest guy in MMA. Say he's got a 500 pound deadlift. Yeah. Does he need a 505 pound deadlift? No. No, no, it was already the best guy. Like, yeah. Who cares? It's the same, and it's the same thing for all the props that love yeah. their squats. And it's also it's also sort of self fulfilling. I talk about this a lot. Like you're you're more likely to do and hammer home and keep practicing the things that you're already good at because it feels good. Because you're like, oh, cool, I'm already good at this. Let's keep practicing this because it makes yeah, you that's feel. That's my deadlift. What about what about that thing that you suck at? Like for you, it's the bench, right? Like your yeah, bench is a self fulfilling prophecy. It's it's shit. So then you don't want to work at it, so it stays shit. So then it, you know it's a. You know, I, I did my right. first upper body workout in uh, four months. The other day. Exactly my yeah. point. You've not used your testing properly, there, man. <laughs> uh, it's because it's cause my KPIs don't include that. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, but, but that's, that's like that's the like that's, need, right? yeah. that's yeah, and that's the um and that's sort of the crux of it when we are left to our own devices and why a yeah, coach should come in stick, and help we us. We just more. stick around. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah. other than saying other than all right, you're gonna see if preseason is going to hopefully improve you upon these random areas. That, that that's really why most clubs will do their testing. It's kind of ill informed, right? Mm-hmm. From a purpose standpoint, like the, the, you know, I and this is where I come out and say I don't think there's a I don't think you need to do any of these tests. I don't think it shows anything because, at the same time, you know, you cost yourself two sessions: one at the beginning of preseason, one at the end, and maybe you've only got ten sessions in total if you're doing two a week for five weeks. So that's that's twenty well, percent of your training. Season. Yeah, that's twenty percent of your t- training time spent testing. And that's not to mention the fact that, you know, when you are testing, you push yourself probably, you know, harder than you, you would do to elicit a training response. Therefore, you, it demands more of your recovery. Um, you know, it takes away from that. So maybe you do the test on a Tuesday. Your Thursday session probably isn't going to be optimal because you're still recovering from how hard you had to push yourself in that test. Whereas if you did Tuesday, Thursday, both progressively, like, harder training, then you'd get a lot more benefit out of that. 
Um, so I think that a lot of this testing that you'll see in preseason is fairly ill-informed from a purpose standpoint. We're not even getting into what those tests are yet. Um, any other, and that's why I say you don't need to yeah, do that. People, rather people than, rather than if you just did intermittent sprints, right? And you just measured the time or the distance. You did some sort of measurement through those intermittent sprints, and you saw on week one, uh, you, maybe you maybe you're doing you know twenty seconds, however many shuttles you can do, and then you've got forty seconds rest. Just for just for a random example, right? And in those twenty seconds, yeah. you're able to do three and a half twenty-five meter shuttles. Well, then you yeah. week five, you're able to do four and a half or maybe even five of those 25 meter shuttles. Do you need to do some sort of extra test on top of that to prove that you're getting better? I would suggest no. You're seeing that you're getting better by virtue of the training that you're doing. Yeah, but you, what you're talking about is just more agile testing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, but, that, is that where we're going with this? Uh, yeah, kind of, absolutely. Um, well, I think that's. I think the point being that that's my biggest point is, in general, most testing is done just cause. I think, and and that's that's why I've sort of formed my opinion of. Do you you know, pe- and this is this is what we're getting to now is people talk about the Bronco like I need to improve my Bronco time. Um, and I need to do, you know, I need to improve my yo-yo test. How do I, like, some, some, someone, I've, I've had it a few times where a client suggested, they're like, listen, man, I know we're going to be doing a yo-yo test for preseason. Uh, do you know where I can get a good yo-yo test on, like, YouTube to just to do as part of my training? I'm like, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. That's, yeah, that's not training. Me. Yeah. Um, and, like, the, and then, and then, because like you know that you're improving because what we're doing you're improving at like the training that we're doing is improving you so you don't need to do a yo-yo test to see that you're improving a yo a testing in general like that sort of nature where you're really pushing yourself to the brink is a terrible isn't a, is not terrible but it's not a good use of your training time right if you're doing like a yo-yo test just from a pure time standpoint right how much of that time is spent like walking or jogging really slowly and then it just slowly builds up, and then all of a sudden you're sprinting, and you finish because you can't sprint yeah. anymore. Like, that doesn't like. And this is what we're going to get into. the The relevance that it has to rugby is is very minimal. Um, but before we even get into the relevance of the actual tests themselves, what is the relevance, or what is the purpose of doing a test? It's to try and show that you're improving if you're doing like a random nature of training. Whereas if you're actually doing an organized nature of training you can see that you're improving i think that taking two sessions or any session away to try and test is kind of redundant um and is there anything that you disagree with what i've said there or or anything that you think um, i've left out yeah i think to this is the assumption that what you're doing ties in or the test you're doing ties in if with the sports skill if it's just it's make sure it's task orientated testing. Carry on. So task orientated testing, it, it comes back to sure what we're doing makes sense, but does it carry over to the KPIs? The same same kind of stuff. I just want to put more emphasis on it. Yes. That's um, so let's get into that then. Yeah. So so we've it's already squashed the fact that most uh testing isn't really done with the purpose of like what we've the, the reasons that we've suggested right it, it, it's it's just that it's just done mm-hmm. just cause right and, and 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 in fact like the highest level the two highest level clubs are or highest level pre-seasons i've had we did testing at the beginning we didn't do a testing at the end like <laughs> we didn't have time like you know, we had things that we want to improve, and I, I think that both, both, both occasions are both. That's even worse. That's. Uh... No, I know, but that's that's the norm, and I will tell you why this happened. I'm almost certain for both. I know one of the preseasons this is what happened, but the other preseason I'm also I'm pretty sure. Um, one preseason we did test in the beginning with the idea we were going to do it at the end, and the coach just wasn't happy at our, about our rate of improvement, especially because, you know, we, you know, we say about a limited time. The amount of things that you've got to get through as a rugby player, like, is massive. Like, not we're talking about a physical component so here, yeah. but you've also like you've got 
five weeks, not just to improve you physically, but you've got to get everyone on board with the same playing system, um, set plays, uh, patterns of play, offense, defense in a different zones. Um, and you've not just got to touch upon them. You've got to hammer them home. And, and like, if you look at, even if you look at the premiership now, I, I don't know if you've watched any of the premiership rugby since its return, but you're, if you look at Exeter Chiefs, they are like a level above everyone else in the premiership. Maybe not Saracens because Saracens are still doing really well as well. Credit to them. Yeah. But I've watched a lot of the Exeter Chiefs and they know exactly what their jobs are everywhere on the field in every situation. Well, the team well, this really... This is a sports KPI, right? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And like... They know exactly like wherever they are. If they're defending, they know what sort of pattern they're supposed to be doing. Uh, if they're in a certain situation, they know exactly what sort of pattern they're doing. If they're attacking and they're in the twenty-two, the whole team knows their exact role, which allows them to execute it so much better. Than, and and they are so much better than all. There, there's not really many times in an eighty-minute game where you look at that team and you're like, oh, they don't really know. They're just sort of run out of ideas. They're just waiting for some inspiration, right? Whereas every single other team, and this is the, the mm. best rugby that you're getting, well, right now in the world because Arturo's stopped. But um, like yeah. this, is, this is the top of the top, right? And there's still, mm -hmm. and the one team that's standing out or one of the two teams that are standing out are doing so, not because they're physically any better, but I mean, that's a, obviously a point. But I think one of the biggest reasons that they stand out is because as a team, they know what they're doing. So that means that they've spent a lot of their time building out these playing systems and these playing patterns, which means they haven't, you know, they, that's improved their team so much. So as a coach, like as a rugby coach, you don't want to spend too much time working on just your speed or your aerobic endurance because you've got to hammer these things home so much. And so, going back to my preseason, one of the preseasons that we had where we did this testing, I think we were just, you know, six weeks into it. We had pre we had our first preseason uh, tour like a week away. And I think the coach just said, look, man, like you could do the, like to the, the strength and conditioning coach who was also the physio uh, was just like, I don't think we're going to do, I don't think this testing is going to help us. Like, what's the point? Like, what are we going to fight? Get out of it. And this is my point that I always make. He said, like, what are we going to get out of it? We're going to know that we're improving. I think we're, we already know we're improving. I think we need to spend this time hammering home these systems. And then it worked because we ended up like winning the league that year because we started off really well because we played this certain style and we did all of that stuff. We didn't arbitrarily run a certain yeah, test. If I was coaching, yeah. If I was coaching rugby, like understanding the systems in place would be a KPI for me. Yeah. But just because a KPI sounds like it has to be something physical, it, it doesn't. Yeah, like, like sports skill is sports skill. Like a good one would be like how many phases of play do does do we go autom autonomously, but how, how, how many phases of play can we produce fitting in the system perfectly before it breaks down? Yeah. against a live opposition you know or and it, or even before that it would be against a non a non-live opposition against like just bagged or, or unopposed and you could do both and they would be both yeah, wait, wait, very it's... good tests um yeah absolutely and those are things that you would see improvement and you would say or maybe you wouldn't see improvement you're like okay we need to spend more time working at this um and then the other test and yeah that's the use improvement that, that's something you can absolutely measure it's yeah. just a number yeah You've absolutely measured that would be a great indicator if you're a coach listening. Hi guys, I just wanted to jump in here to tell you that if you're enjoying this podcast and you want to become a better athlete, then you can go ahead and visit rugby-muscle.com and pick up any of our free goodies. That is uh, the 50 free rugby conditioning sessions, the physique nutrition crash course video series, the supplement guide, and newly added is a macro calculator. Yes, that's right, a macro calculator where you will be able to work out your protein, carbs, fat, and calories that you should be eating on a daily basis to give you a guide as to where to start your diet from. This will help in conjunction with your 50 free conditioning sessions to build you out a decent little plan that will enable you to take control of your training and use effective training and nutrition to become a better athlete. All that stuff and more can be found at rugby-muscle.com or rugby-muscle.com forward slash macros for the macro breakdown. And the other preseason I did where we did um, we did 
testing at the beginning and we just didn't do it it was we stopped it i think because i think we had to skip a couple training sessions because of the weather and then the coaches again was just like look uh just say we're not going to do any testing now we're just going to carry on like really trying to implement our game plan and working on preseason because preseason isn't just about getting your body fit like you should go into preseason and this is what i always tell the guys that i work with one-on-one is if you go into preseason as fit and firing as you possibly can be like that's great because then you don't have to worry about getting fit you have to worry about all of the systems and the playing styles and um executing your skills and your tactics as, as best you can do you remember when richard mccall got injured uh he had like a pretty bad injury he was out for a while no and he came back into rugby and he, he went straight back to being the best flanker in the game <laughs> okay? and it wasn't because he was fit and everyone else was it yeah 100 percent. and, and right. i mean it's, it's something it's, i i sort of think about it's like if it, it's like especially with fitness right especially and we'll get into what that exactly means but if you can get like to the fittest that you could be then that box is ticked and that means that just gives you uh, and it's it's easy to maintain that just by training rugby at a decent intensity and then you get all the improvements that are training rugby right whereas if you're unfit like you're working so hard just to be able to train and just to keep up that you don't get to focus on improving your passing because you're just gas trying to get to the position you're supposed to be in like being that fit, was my last couple of seasons playing yeah right like this, but, but, you, but like then you're not gonna well that. and that's kind of my point is like uh, and this is the point i was trying to hammer home again another point i try and hammer home is like you know strength and conditioning has its limits right but if you are not if you are not fit or strong enough, you are extremely limited at your ability to improve at rugby. So if, you're, if you've ticked all the boxes that you can do with strength and conditioning, that then allows you to improve at a faster rate with your skills, with your tactical decisions, with all of the other aspects that there are with rugby because you're in good shape. So yes, it, there's a ceiling to how much, like you, like you said, if you've got a 200 kilo deadlift, maybe having a 205 kilo deadlift isn't going to get you that much better. But if you've got a 200 kilo deadlift, then your, you know, then your ability to ruck is at its highest potential it needs to be. And then you can just focus on your rucking technique. Your strength isn't going to hold you back. Likewise, your fitness isn't going to hold you back from doing like other sort of um, do, improving all your other areas of your game. Yeah, so this is um, actually making me think that testing is really important at the start. I'll explain why. Because if you test at the start and you have a standard that you expect guys to meet, and some people meet that standard, some people don't meet that standard, that allows you to individualize out what you're doing. Yes. Because right? if, yes. if you're a coach... That you is want why to you would do thing. a test at the start. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah so um, like if you've got guys who fulfill it, Fucking let them go and do skills. If you are guys who didn't work hard enough in off season, like do, the argument is they shouldn't even be going into high intensity match drills because their chance of injury is so much higher. Yeah, absolutely, and that's actually spot on because that's um, you know, uh, when I coach like as an actual rugby coach, not strength and conditioning. The first fifteen minutes of each session are spent on individuals okay because it's more of a practical thing because some guys can make it at seven some guys can't make it till 7 15 7 30 7 40 um so we start our session around 7 20 working on your individual uh, skills and whatever you need to work on as an individual so the forwards will go off and do their line outs like just practice the skill of because we don't do this in rugby we don't practice the skill of tackling we don't practice the skill of um doing just really efficient line out lifts we practice doing our line out calls we practice tackling by just doing a game so figuring out what you're figuring out what you're weak at and improving on it is massive like so again if and and i've heard of a few clubs and those that listen to this podcast know that sean's his club uh one of my athletes they've done fat camp for the guys that are uh that have come in out of shape so they need the the extras whereas that time could be spent doing so much extra for stuff that for the guys that are already in shape, or maybe it's speed because why not? Because most people don't really work speed. So that 20 minutes that everyone else is getting really is trying to get that fitter. 
you can actually spend just doing sprints or power work and uh, real specific like l high intensity sprinting work to really improve your sprint or your agility yeah and, and, that, and that's what, exactly why we test right yeah but that's not why clubs test most, for the most part yeah. right but that's that would yeah. be a really good thing to do in pre-season okay where am i weak compared to everyone else then you know that that's what you want to improve upon now what those tests would look like is also going to change and this is the really the point that i think is i think most this is what so i was saying my outlook on testing in general is probably a little bit extreme like i said i don't like doing any sort of specific tests each time i just think it's just a waste of time now other people disagree, but where we, where most people do agree upon is the types of testing that we need to be doing, right? Um, mm -hmm. So we look at the – what is – do you know what the Bronco is? I have not even looked into it. It doesn't seem to fulfill any of my sports criteria. Yeah. So uh, I don't, don't even worry about it. So the reason that, the reason that people – I'm Googling it now. The reason that the people do the Bronco test – you know why they oh, do it? Oh, it's a cone drill, yeah. Yeah, you know why they do it's it? Because everyone, it's because New Zealand do it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. They do, yeah. and Malcolm's is the same thing. I, I don't mind Malcolm's as much, um, but they do the Bronco test literally, literally, because that's what New Zealand do. And they're like, well, New Zealand are good, so there you go. But this is one of those things where if you actually look at um, – yeah key performance indicators this would like there would be there would be a correlation right because if you've got if you've got a good bronco test it means you're just generally fit and if you're generally decently fit you're probably gonna you know it's just it's gonna lead to you being uh slightly better right but does that mean do you know what the you, uh go on. sorry on, mate, sorry i think do you know what the key indicator or um being good at your clean and jerk is if you're in the CrossFit Games? Uh, clean, doing the clean and jerk. Yeah. It, I'll, <laughs> I'll save you, mate. It's basically anything else. Basically, what it was, if they, they call it all the different movements. Oh, I'm with you. It was weird. And it basically went, if you're good at something, you're, you're good at most things. And okay. That's, that was basically it. Like, just if you're fitter, you're fitter. Right. And yeah, exactly. And, and, and especially at the level that you know, most people listen to this are at, same thing with the Bronco, right? If you're just fitter, you're going to be you're going to be good at the Bronco just by nature. And New Zealand guys are fit, therefore they end up being good at the Bronco. But you know, is that what makes them good at rugby? No, yeah, exactly. It's not. Um, so the Bronco is you set twenty, so you run to a twenty meter and back, then to the forty meter and back, then to the sixty meter and back, and then you do that five times. I think it makes it out to be close to, I think close to three k, and a good time for that That's is right. under five minutes. Thoughts upon that as a va va valid test for rugby? I mean, it's so I I bracket my, my test into so I look at everything as a test. Okay, like every single thing we do is a test. Okay, and I bracket those into like competition exercises. Is this like is this is this exercises. is this are you testing me now? With this, yeah. This is, this, is, this is a this is a sports skill test for you, mate. This is a coaching yes. skill test, hmm. right? Um, but everything we do, right? So, and I bracket them into competition exercises, development exercises, specific exercises, and general exercises, right? So, when I look at this, what I see is it's a general development. It's a GPP deal. Right, so as, as a test for like specifically, is this a, a really rugby specific test? No. But is it a test that I can say, okay, guys, you maybe need to work on your general conditioning or not? I'd be like, yeah, okay, it's for that. Okay. It just depends. Is your general conditioning a key performance indicator when you come to the sharp end of a season? I disagree. Yeah, what's that? Because I think this is, you're testing me and I was supposed to disagree. No nah, man, that's <laughs> I'm just joking. No, uh, no, I think it is. I think, I think it is. It, absolutely, it's a general same, but just like, um, you know, just just like rowing 300 meters or 500 meters or a thousand meters would be the same sort of general test. The problem I have with this yeah. is that it's performing. Four four and a half minutes is a great time, but like around five minutes. 
right, of consistent mm-hmm. work. When is that ever done in rugby at a consistent pace? Yeah, never, right? No. Never, right? Never. Um, you could argue maybe they're changing direction. When do you ever just change 90 degrees no, all no. the time? Yeah. A low speed. It just doesn't yeah. happen. Um, I think it's just a terror. I don't know why it's so popular. And like, and like Reece, what's, what gripes me or, or I find interesting, right, is that this is like a new test. Like, this is not This is something that's come around in the last 10 or so years and become really popular. But, mm-hmm. like, we as a, a strength and conditioning community and just, a, you know, as we've got more and more data, this should be, like, thrown out. Like, you know, how because I mean, because it was about ten years ago where we threw out the beep test because we're like okay this doesn't make sense for rugby because it's continuous in nature and it kind of just tops out and um, in fact let's so we'll, we'll, we'll I want to throw the beep test in with this because yeah, it's yeah it's the test of general conditioning it's continuous in nature in general you're going to be held back by your your uh, your lactic speed, if that makes sense. So you're like, how, how fast your 70% sort of running speed is. Would that make sense? Like if you're running for five minutes, yeah, you're not, so you're not, needs, you're not, you're not doing a slow. Around four and bits. Yeah. When, you, when, yeah. when you're, when you're running, like when you're doing a five minute continuous sprint and when you're doing a sprint, when you're ball bagged, as you would be doing with a beep test, um, you're not going to be running at your fastest you can do. You just aren't able to keep that speed. No. And then by definition with just the speed test, but, uh, with the beep test, you're, yeah, you're trying to hold on. You're trying to make those beeps as fast as you can, but the, 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 the you're going to top out at about 70 to 80% of your top end speed. Maybe, maybe probably 75% yeah. at most. Um, you don't run that speed in rugby. You're either sprinting or you're jogging slowly or standing still. Um, you know what I mean? Um, rarely are you running, or maybe you're running like 40% to get into position. Um, it's just not done in rugby. And, and this is seen by the data. So to show that, you know, so what, what the point we're trying to get here is where's the relevance from that to rugby? There isn't much, right? Yeah. Outside of a general conditioning, it's not there. Um, so then could we, could we try and get a better test? And what yeah, would that sure. You like? have to know. You have to know what the work ratios were for rugby. So, what is it like? Thirty seconds on, and a couple of minutes off. Give or take. It's more like ten to twenty seconds on. It depends. At forwards, it's more, but that's more grappling. Um, whereas, uh, in general, for rugby, it's like ten to twenty seconds on at most, and then like a minute off. Yeah. So I, I'd be like, okay, what, what's rugby? Rugby is repeating that effort. Um, as many times as possible in a set amount of time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or being able to do that at a high rate, or be able to do it with skills. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I'd consider a test like that, but honestly, like the test you want to do is a test that the coach is going to say is most relevant for him. Mm-hmm. So whatever your coach's KPIs are, is a test you want to build, for that, right? Yeah. So what if you're what if you're like 2003 England, and really your key KPI is how long can you hold the ball up in the mall while someone kicks it? Yeah. Right. So, whatever, whatever fulfills the style of game. You're gonna so, play, then that would be like a Zercher, like a, a Zercher carry or something, right? <laughs> really, though, right? Yeah, right? Like that would be really good for that. Um, and for those that don't know, Zercher is where you carry, where you hold a bar or any object. Right, or I think it maybe it'd just be a bar. But you hold it in the in the crook of your elbow, and then you try and stand up and either walk or squat or whatever. Um, and it, the point here being is that uh, so f- for aerobic for for aerobic, I've given it away. For rugby, we've said millions of times now on this podcast, everywhere uh, you look when you search anything rugby muscle and fitness. We tell you to fucking death to the to the fact that it still blows my mind. I go on about it, and it still is because you know we get new people coming to our paths, and we have to explain to them rugby is aerobic, right? Yeah, absolutely. And most people just that that just 
it just falls upon deaf ears with most people because you're just not told that you're not you don't think that because you think this is a sport where we're constantly sprinting around and we're constantly smashing people and we're constantly doing this it's not it's a sport where you have a high intensity impact where either you carry or you you sprint into a ruck or you sprint up in a defensive line which most teams don't but you make a tackle you get up you you then slowly jog or you sprint to where you're supposed to be and then you rest for you know like we said up to a minute and then that's not even considering all the that you know that's that's just ball in play then there's times when the ball isn't in play like a lot where you're waiting for a scrum or you're waiting for something else to happen um, yeah, so a huge chunk of the game yeah yeah so so there you're going like is aerobic effort really a key performance indicator is it a secondary performance indicator oh yeah right because yeah i'd say that being more aerobically adapted or being better at aerobic work, it actually makes you better at the real sports test rather than it being a key indicator. But then, so it's like, can you it's actually like measure? A, it, so it's a, but then that's a really good foundation. And this is what we st- yeah, spoke about at the beginning, is. right? It's a really good foundational um, like uh, test or indicator, right? If you, if you are, you know, this is exactly what we talk about. Like, and, and, Let's let's use the 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 good example I use. I, I think it's a good example. The, the the test I use, and it's not a test because again, it's usually part of the training. Is just a five to seven k run. Yeah, um, it's not That's perfect, appropriate. but I think it's it's a good enough time to get aerobic. It's not a long enough time for it to be a marathon or something overly stupidly taxing. It's far enough that you're not held back by your sprint speed. It's more of an aerobic. Uh, you know, you're held back by your aerobic speed. Yes, speed can work, but guess what? You need some sort of speed in rugby as well. So I think it does hold quite good relevance. Um, it's I one, it, the same test it's very, very simple to do. Um, you know, you don't need too much. So everyone can do it. It's then can be repeatable because sometimes that's another problem with if you're doing like a Bronco and you're doing it measured on a rugby field, like you could you could change rugby fields in the same club and get a different time because either the surface is different or because of the distance being slightly longer or shorter um and that's you know anyway point being is yeah i think you measure how you measure the 5k right now that measurement of the 5k isn't necessarily going to indicate how good a player is but it's to me, it's going to indicate their potential, right? Because if you're over 25 me, if you're over 25 minutes for a 5K, that probably means that you you there's a lot of room there for you to improve in your aerobic system, and you that's something you need to target, right. right? But if it's 22 or under, if it's 22 to 20 or 23 to 20, like it's okay, it's probably better than what it was, like, or it's be- it's not disastrous, but it could do with some work. If it's if it's 21 or under. I'd say that we're doing quite well for aerobic work, right? Would that you ever means, say if it's sub-20, you're doing too much? I wouldn't say you're doing too much. I'd just say you don't need to do any more. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, then, I, was, I was curious. But, yeah. But then what you're saying it, from it being an underlying sort of uh, KPI, that means that um, you know, if, you ha- if you take seven people, one of them, one of them – runs a uh a 5k at 21 minutes one of them runs a 5k at 20 minutes one of them runs at 19 and then the other four are sort of interspersed between those two times there is no real way of being able to test who's the best rugby player out of that versus if you've got one guy that's that that runs a 20 minute 5k and then another guy that runs a 25 minute 5k or no even better the same guy right who runs a 25 minute or a 20 minute, probably the one that almost certainly the one that runs a 20 minute 5k is going to be the better playing version of that person. But yeah, yeah if you go, if you take the same person and you go from 19 and a half minutes to uh, 20 minutes, like that person that runs 20 minutes or even 21 minutes could be a better player. Uh, they've just, you know, they're just slightly looser in the aerobic sense. Make sense. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. At the end of the day, we've got to test something. We've got to have some kind of measurement of how well you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Whether we do it daily. So I do it every single session. Every single training session I, is a test. Um, so I you use. You can't test how so good you are rugby. If we were testing, you know, this, but the, the, the general test is 
you know, it's okay to do a general test is what we're saying, right? Because we can't, mm-hmm. like, we can't just keep playing rugby every single week. But yeah, you can't, if we're do doing the general test, right, let's make it somewhat relevant to rugby, which is not a Bronco, which I, I, I humbly submit to you that it could be the 5K. Um, we had, I, I had Sean, I had Sean Seal from Upside Strength who works in, uh, for rugby, rugby club of the New York. Sorry for you Swiss guys that I absolutely butchered that. Um, but he he did the he does a half Cooper's test. Oh really? That's interesting. Yeah. That's um, cool. That's a cool test. Yeah. Um you want to explain yeah. what a Cooper's my, um, test is? My, yeah, this is a twelve minute test. Um so half Cooper's test. I have got this right, haven't I? Is it twelve minute twelve minute run? Is that what it is? I think so, yeah. But he, and, yeah, and then he I also does. A, I think he does a little bit more. I can't remember if he does more or less. I should probably get him back in the back on the podcast. But he does a. I can't remember if he does more or less change of directions as well. Like built yeah, so, so Cooper run. So yeah, it is twelve minutes test. Um, the half Cooper runs were interesting because like that five six minute kind of marker mm-hmm. is really, and that's what I use for all my maximum rubric speed testing. Yeah, it is around six six to eight minutes. Right. Just because that, that is that's like what you said. It allows you to work at a good pace, but without worrying about what top speed is. And then when we're speed. and then when we're talking about a um like a practicality standpoint as well, we spoke about how sometimes the problem with testing is that you could lose up to twenty percent of your preseason by doing testing. This is just six minutes, right? So I think I think that works quite yeah. well as well. And and, yeah. and for athletes I, um, that are doing their own I training and want to that. figure out what how they're trying to improve. Like that's why I do. That's why I like to do the five k because you could do a five k as like a bit of a warm up, and you know, yeah, it's quite tough. But you could fuck that. <laughs> yeah, but you could, and then you and no, then I you do, get I into do a it. session, you know. Yeah. yeah, and I think that yeah. like those methods quite work quite well. Um, I do. I, I'm, a, I'm. I am a fan of that half Cooper test as well. But yeah, no, I've never. I've never heard of that before. But it, it basically exactly matches what I people do. Just I get them to do it on a bike or a row. Yeah. Well. Yeah, and, and yeah, so that would be the best test for aero- for your aerobic system. Um, and aerobic will give a good indicator about like the base level you can get better at rugby. What are some other tests yeah. or some other things that would be more valid that we just don't see in preseason? Have you got anything there? <sighs> yeah, I'd like, to see, I'd like to see some kind of randomized agility test. That'd be kind of nice. The idea of a cell juicy test is kind of okay, but something where it has a demand as well would be nice. Sorry, you started to cut out there. Say it one more time. My bad. So some kind of randomized agility test would be nice. So mm-hmm. the idea of like a set agility test is okay, um, and it gives you like an idea of potential, like you said, but something with a cognitive demand, something where you have to think of yeah. what you're going to do and then do it this would was, be quite nice. This is – yeah. Um, th- this is my thing with like agility testing in general is that you can get really good at an agility test. Like you can get good at doing a dance move, but you could get like, yeah. Oh, what a, what a good, what a good example or analogy, right? You could get really good at a specific, you could get really good at the tango or some sort of special ballroom dance, right? Even if you have absolutely no rhythm at all, right? You could spend a few so weeks. attacked by that. <laughs> are you have you have you learned a, a specific ballroom dance have you no so not don't yet but i probably will at some point soon right but if you yeah. if you learn if you get like do you ever remember that tv show this is your moment or something and this is your life no this is your moment yeah i'm pretty sure it's called this is your moment and what they did was they took random people that applied for the show and they're like, you're going to learn this really difficult, specific skill in one week, right? So they took some people and they got them to memorize every single flag of the whole, every country in the entire world. Other people, they got to try and see if they could hold a conversation or, or learn specific words in a different language. Other people, they got to see if they could do, they could perfect like uh, like archery or throwing darts or like real specific skills that, you know, you think, well, that takes like a real good dedication to get good at. And then they'd give them a prize if they nailed it. Right. You follow me? 
That's like they do, idea. you know, yeah, yeah. like yeah, it was a good show, man. And they and they, you know, there's like one where they would get really good at the, uh, like so, someone maybe could do like how long he could hang off of a of a pole or something, you know, all these different tests. Point here being that this is sort of hacking your way at being good at something, right? Um, you could do the same thing with a ballroom dance. So you could you could have no rhythm whatsoever. You learn just one choreographed dance perfectly because you just hammer home that choreographed dance. You you get you know you you hack away at your your the system and you figure out exactly how you can do it and get you get you just keep hammering it home, hammering it home, and eventually you learn how to do that dance and you perform it really well. Does that mean that you're a good dancer? No, it does not. Right. It's the same thing with um, doing specific agility tests where you've got like a, a, you know, like the T test is a really good example. You could get, you could be really good at a T test, but you could suck at actual general rugby agility because you're not making it. You're not learning to step around an opponent or you're not learning to use your feet to make a tackle really well. You're just going through this preordained pattern that you've, you've, you've hammered home to try and improve upon. Um, a lot of agility is, like you said, reacting to what the opponent is giving you um, yeah. and then appropriately you know, displacing your weight and projecting yourself and moving in the direction that you want to move. It's not, and, you know, and also fooling the opposition helps as well, like disguising which, step, which direction you're going to go. That Just creating is, space, basically. Crazy that, is, space. that is really difficult to test. Yeah, super, super hard test. Yeah. Um, you probably need quite a lot of kit in terms of like lights and randomized stuff and it'd be a pain in the ass. Yeah. I mean, again, better yeah. just, just actually just doing rugby. I think you're better. At, and, and and I think that's my general thing with rugby in general is as specific as we can get with all of these tests, they're all going to be that second or third tier where they just – they they – indicate your potential to be good at the sport but they and i think most of strength and conditioning in general is just indicating your potential to be good at the sport right yeah but in terms of rugby yeah yeah um so yes improve yes measure where you're improving um ideally I mean, it's not to me. It's it's a no brainer. You should be measuring your training each week anyway, and seeing that you're getting better. If you're not, then yeah, you're leaving things up to chance. And fuck it, go test because you're wasting your time anyway. Why not waste another fucking two sessions at the beginning and the end of a training block by testing? But otherwise, you should see yourself progress as time goes on anyway, and therefore you don't need to be doing these tests. Um, and your training and what you're training should be improving and what your training should you should already know has some sort of good effect on your ability to play yeah. rugby i'd argue that if you're not recording what you're doing you're not actually training you're just working out yeah 100 percent. i 100 percent agree with that cool yeah. um any other points on testing i think we do this is i'd say i'm very happy with this podcast i think this is about as um almost close to being structured i know we we went off on a tangent where we spoke about a, a fucking game show and you went we you went straight away off on a tangent on korean shows yeah um, i wasn't which really reminds me prepared to start talking to be <laughs> um, are you ever prepared to, to talk i don't mind talking about like lifting stuff up putting it down um, but, uh, yeah to, to finish off right what if you were if you were a player right and your coach said, right, we're going to do this test now. And what, like, are there any ways that you would approach the coach and say, uh, listen, bud, like what the fuck? So I've actually been in this situation. Yeah. I've been in this situation. Um, and I actually didn't approach the coach and it was such a bullshit situation because when you're preseason with somebody playing sprinting to you want to be sick, it's just fucking terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it depends on the coach. If it's a good coach, he has a good relationship with the players. I think it's probably just a conversation. Um, as long as you can prove it, as long as you go to the coach and be like, God, this is what I've done, this is where I'm at, this is my, this is my numbers. So if you're tracking your training, you can show it. Yeah. I don't think it's a big deal. I think, the, I think most good coaches would be pretty accepting of that. Yeah. Um, can I work on something else? Or, or, yeah. or 
you'd even or i'd but, even um, suggest like saying like what's the purpose of this you know and so, I, so that's I, what i did and it was it was to get fitter and i was like well this will make you fitter that's, that's exactly gonna what i was going to say proper old um, school i don't know what then, my old school voice is northern but they're like get fitter lad come on get harder get more get more stuck in and you're just like okay yeah not really it, with that kind of guy like there's like it's like arguing about i don't know trumpism like it's this pointless like if you're not going to change someone's mind it's probably not even worth good yeah resentment. so then what would you do <sighs> what did i do i just stopped turning up um, no not I what did you do you. what yeah. would yeah um, okay <laughs> uh, what, what are better options than just not fucking showing up uh, um probably sandbag what you're doing Oh, so Jesus. I give all my, my guys a specific conditioning profile. Okay, so I test it and then give them their, their numbers for different areas. So they know what speed they need to run at for repetitive sprints and sports. They know what speed they need to run at for tempo work, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I try and figure out the point of the session and work to the capacity that you should be working at rather than killing yourself. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I kind of get what you're saying there. Problem with that being is that if I'm one of eight back rows at the club, right, and all the others are crushing it and I'm there sandbagging it and I'm saying, listen, coach, don't worry. Uh, I've got I, – I, I have a program that I'm doing. Don't worry about it. I ain't getting picked, mate. I'm playing for the twos. Cool. How long is other guys going to last? I mean, they'll, they'll start the season. The team plays quite well. Maybe the team wins, not just not because they're fitter or anything special, but because they're a better team. Just and you're stuck win. in the twos all season. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. What would you suggest? What's your uh, what's your suggestion as well? Uh, I would suggest two things. So, number one, if this is so, there's two different ways you could do it. Number one is to uh, just approach it like these. Like you would just spend the rest. Like it's just you just sort of be like, okay, this is what we're going to have to deal with fuck it um and you sort of plan the rest of your training around that if if it is brutal like yes don't push yourself to the brink make it slightly less brutal but just understand that that's going to be a high cns session okay or a high stress session mm -hmm. therefore maybe do some speed earlier in that day or the day before i mean the day before earlier in that day or right before your session maybe if you're really you know if you want to like really push yourself then do like a tough session that day in the gym beforehand um but presumably or, not posterior chain sorry yeah presumably not like posterior chain yeah probably not posterior chain probably it, not, dep yeah. it, it depends I, I i'm not too against it because i just don't think that like it depends how hard you're getting like run into the ground, right? Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, I think you just say, right, uh, this is what I'm going to have to deal with. So I'm going to have my Tuesdays and my Thursdays or whatever day you're training rugby as your high intensity days. And then just getting as best you can aerobically, or even if you're working power, you can work a low level power. If you're working, um, you can't really work speed at a low level. Like hypertrophy, you can certainly work at a low level. So, like, make sure that all of your other training, maybe it's like nasal breathing only, like it is mm -hmm. really low stress. Therefore, you're going to be able to recover. And you understand that, like, that's okay. Once, once you've, once the coach is done, um, just grueling you into the ground, your like your your next phase, you can work your high intensity the way that you want to work. But understand that you're just just for this this block of training or however long preseason is you can't work that higher intensity. You're just going to have to work. You, everything that you're doing on your own is a lower intensity to either help you recover or just stop you from like completely gassing out during preseason. And at that point, then you can put your best foot into it and like actually make the improvements that the coach wants to see, even though you know really in the back of your head, maybe this isn't going to massively help my rugby. But like again, if you're just getting generally fitter, it's still going to have some sort of benefit. Um, yeah, the other, I, mean, I think it's not a bad time yet, so. Yeah, and then the other approach I would say is like NFL combine style, where you know, doing well, we didn't even touch on that. But, no, yeah. I know it was a point I was going to say, but like, like so, one of the, the the big tests for the NFL combine is how much can you bench, how, how many reps can you do with two hundred twenty five? How, how yeah. this indicates your ability to play American football 
I mean, especially depending on position, is very little. Yeah. But at that point, it doesn't fucking matter. That doing good at that test will get you like hundreds of thousands of dollars if you get it right. Yeah. Um, like it, it can literally make or break your life getting good at that test. No one get, like it's not about getting good at football at that point. I would say sometimes it can be the same thing for rugby, right? Because I've got some guys that are, you know, they're on development squads and they're tra- like, and we're we're having to train, uh, like a sort of a bronco sort of type of uh, fitness, just to get better at the bronco, just so that he gets, so that you don't get overlooked. You know what I mean? Like if there are tests that you know your coach likes, even if you disagree with it, perhaps just potentially figure out ways to number one get better at that specific test, like what you can improve. Ideally, improving your rugby, but if you don't, it's just a means to an end. It's like same thing for your driving test, right? You have perfect 10 and 2. You look at your in mirrors perfectly and you, you, you feed the wheel perfectly and all this sort of stuff. You do that to pass a test so that, that you can then drive. Same thing for your preseason test. Do what you need to do to pass a test so you can then go and play rugby and that's what's going to impress your coach the most. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's a much better answer than mine. <laughs> yeah, I've thought about this a little no, bit. I don't more, mind saying man. it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind saying that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, it's it's something that I have to deal with. So, yeah, all good, mate. Yeah, like, right. I'm lucky in my sport. All the masses is how much you can pick up and how much you can put down. Yeah, so I don't have to worry about that shit. And that's quite a good keeper. For, uh, it's quite easy. It's a lot easier to figure out keeper uh, key performance indicators for that. Yeah, my um, competition exercises are pretty simple. And the, yeah. but, but I do think that one of the other really important takeaways for guys that are doing their own training from this should be your KPI minus. Um, I think that's a really valuable yeah, point that was they want to take away from as well. It's, yeah. So un, if you are, understand that if you're training, if you're as long as you're recording data and you can see week to week how that data trends, you are kind of testing. So maybe you don't need to test. If you are testing, make sure that there's specific reasons for that test and make sure that that test really does apply to what you're trying to make it apply to understand the limitations of that application. Maybe it is general, but that's okay as well. And then understand what things don't like help you uh, and what things hold you back and get rid of those things. Like, especially as amateur rugby players, if you've only got a Tuesday and a Thursday to train, or if you've got to work a day job and you've only got a Monday, Wednesday, Friday or something in the gym, like you are very limited in your time and your recovery resources. So, and I say this a lot, but with my guys in rugby master elite, like more of my work is stripping away the shit that they don't need to do. Kind of yeah. Uh, and Mate, most so- like, it's funny. It's not a selling point. It's it's literally what happens is most guys cut back and they save themselves so much time, which then allows them to really focus on what they need to focus on, improve what they need to improve upon, and then you know, um, recovering and get better at those things. Mate, on this point, like Kitty's benching about four kilo over the world record right now. Do you want to know how many repetitions she's doing per training session? <sighs> I would guess total reps on the on the bench or oh shit you can do total reps on the bench if you want to yeah five no she's doing seven seven total reps on bench press that's, that's still really for training nice. session seven yeah, total like that's, working I'm... reps yeah I I did seven reps in my first set <laughs> yeah but but look how like the of twelve sets and how specific it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look I don't know. Yeah, demand versus recovery capacity. Like, she does it every day. Yeah. So, so oh. look at what you can take out. Can you take out so much work? That and look can, at, you and look at the purpose and things. So, so when I said I did seven in my first of 12 sets, that is then doing not 12 sets on the bench, but 12, you know, 12 total sets. So four different exercises, three three sets on each or something like that. Um, yeah, point, yeah. Point being... Yeah, I mean, this is bench press and landed bench. But. There are so many different yeah things that you can improve upon, but figuring out what it is that you need to improve upon is key and what it is you don't yeah. need to worry about then. Cool, man. Um, do you want to be followed anymore yet? Yeah. Like uh, we said, your Instagram is athlete testing. You put some pretty cool stuff mm. up on there, thought-provoking stuff. Other than that, you're all good. Just to, that, that would be your nah. contribution to the podcast, yeah, dude. Good, mate. Beautiful, mate.
All right, yeah, we'll wrap it up honestly, there. mate, I'm so jacked of time right now. Cool, buddy. Have a great day. You too, mate. Be- because, because, <laughs> right. yeah, I know I'm doing it, mate. I've, I've hit record because we, because uh, I said right at the beginning of the podcast when you were talking about doing uh, AI sort of systemized progressions and, and alterations of your coaching based upon your testing. I said I was going to come back to that point. I didn't realize I was going to leave it till past when I stopped recording the podcast. But I feel like this is something the important to tack time. on to the end. Yeah. This is like really the important part of testing is testing to inform what your next coaching decision is. So you using the AI, right, doesn't mean that the AI is actually doing the coaching. The AI just facilitates your coaching. And in fact, that enhances your or it makes your coaching actually a deeper level because you have to analyze every single aspect of your coaching and why you would make the changes that you would make right so say if someone um does a jump height that's a lot lower than you than you wanted for that program then the coat then the ai would make the change that you would want to make but you would justify why make it you make you would choose to make that change in the first place right and that is one yeah, of like I said, that, I, that I is, make very few decisions. Yeah. Right. But no, you make all of the decisions for a reason, right? And then Okay, yeah. I, you know I, what I, I mean? Yeah. You don't make any subjective decisions. Or, or kind of. Right? Yeah. You still do Did the, you see the picture I sent you? The agile testing picture? I'm looking at it now, actually. Jesus. Okay. So I know you did, this is constant. yeah, this is the end of a testing block. But this data, I assume you put a screenshot of this up or something tells me how the next session is going to look right? yes yeah so, that, the, right, so and that's what i'm saying like, but you're but you well it kind of tells you it tells you the data and you already have in your mind because of your coaching system and coaching process that you prefer you have in your mind what you would do with that data and then therefore you have but you justify it right Every yeah. change is justified. And I think this is the point I want to make, and this is why I, I made a point to hit record and say it again. When you have most clubs do their testing, like they're not going to change anything as a result of the testing. And therefore, they're not, you know, it's, it's not really informing any sort of change or anything. Whereas if you're, if you're coaching through AI and you have to justify every single change that you make and why you're doing it, like, that is going to make for so much of a higher level of um, like training because you actually put in some reason thought behind it. Whereas if you're, you know, going back to that old school coach, just run to get fitter. And then you do your two tests. Like there's no change because of the result of this test, you know? Yeah. That's pointless. Like, that's, that's... like if we, if the, if the, if a coach was to take a team and see that all of his team, right. Got four and a half minutes on a Bronco even though Broncos are fucking point. Do you think that coach is going to go, okay, looks like we don't need to work fitness lads. Let's just play. No, like they're going to do whatever they were going to do anyway. Maybe that'd be a miracle if they did. And that'd be fantastic if they did. doesn't happen, right? It's dumb as shit. Like, yeah, it's just fucking stupid. The purpose like, of you, testing uh, is to inform yeah. future. If you're just going to have a plan, by your own yeah, principles. that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's fucking nailed it. Just cut it there. Let's stop. All right. Now I'll hit stop. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking nice. Can you, what do you, I'm going to write that down. What did you just say? I don't know. It was good. Wherever it was, it was fucking good. I'll, I'll, um, it, yeah. I'll, record, I'll, I'll give it to you as a snippet from the podcast and you can put it up. Yeah, there. that was fucking great, man. Uh, Beauty. That's what it is. Good podcast, awesome, mate. Right. I'm going to... Yeah, cheers, bro. Say hi to I'm Speedy for me. And start another one. Yeah, we'll do, man. We'll All do. Right. Peace. All right, buddy. Try. All right. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed that episode of the Robbie Muscle Podcast, then I've got a quick little request and a potential prize giveaway for you if you do said request. All I want you to do is go to Apple Podcasts and type up a five-star review. Just your general opinions of the podcast would be great feedback, but also helps us reach higher rankings, get more exposure, allow me to attract more guests and devote more time to developing a better all-around podcast experience for you. All you have to do once again is go and give us a five-star review on whatever podcast service you use. Let me know that you've got it. And then every single week, I'll be selecting one review to give away a free prize. That free prize will be either one free month of Team Rugby Muscle. That's our world-class strength condition program app delivered directly to your phone. 
or if that doesn't interest you, then we've got one free consultation where I'll, I'll go over your training program, your nutrition, and advise you how to best plan for your goals. Even if none of those things interest you, it's still doing me a solid and helping the podcast grow by going and giving us a five-star review. There's no real excuse. It takes like one minute and that helps the show out exponentially. So I'd really appreciate if you could do that. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you in the next one.